Hi everyone, this is Becky from My Creative Life. Welcome to my channel. Today I am sharing a layout here in my Large Dilutions journal. And I am gonna do something a little bit different than I normally do, which is to do a single page layout. So I'm gonna work on the left side of this two page spread today. And I'm gonna begin by working on my background. So here I pulled out a, quite a bit of Distress Oxide inks here and some pinks. I also grabbed a yellow, I grabbed a green and orange. So I'm going to work first on blending some colors together here on my background. And I am going to leave in all of this process so you can see exactly how I got the look that I achieved at the end of this entire process. So I am going to continue blending my colors and I will go back and forth with my colors until I get the look that I'm going for. So at this point here, I'm adding in just a touch of green and you can see I'm switching out my brushes here. I try to use separate brushes for each family color. That way I have less cleaning up in between inking. And here I'm just pulling out this green one here for my mold lawn. And I will go ahead and add all of the items I used today down in my description box with the exact colors that I use. So now I'm gonna do some stenciling and you can see I went ahead and used my heat tool just to give my page a quick dry. And I'm pulling out this beautiful floral stencil. This is from Joggles and it's a combination of a stencil and mask. You can see we have the stenciling part of the of it where you have all the outlines for those florals and the mask would be the more solid flowers flowers where it's filled in so once you remove this from the page where it's filled in you will get the background that i already did and of course i'm using color right now to add into the stencil part as well so I'm using some green. I am gonna go back and forth with my different colors, my yellow and also some pinks. I will remove my stencil, take a look, and if I find I, I don't have a really nice balance of any of these colors, I will go back in and add color where I feel that I need it. Now, that particular color that I need, I'm gonna add it in wherever I need it. I am also gonna layer up my florals and because the stencil, because of the design on the stencil, it's very, very easy to layer the colors and the images on each other. It does not look messed up at all. And you'll see as I continue along and I layer up some of these florals, you'll see exactly what I mean. So here I'm just gonna continue adding in my florals, then I'll remove my stencil and go ahead and add florals and colors wherever I think it needs it on my background.
So you can see here, I did switch out to the smaller finger brush dauber, and that helps me to isolate a lot of these small florals that's on the stencil and add them exactly where I want them to be instead of using that larger brush that I used before in the background. And all of these items, like I said before, I will have them linked down in my description box. So now that I'm done with my background, I'm gonna go ahead and choose my focal point and I'm going through some napkins right now from Jane Davenport. And I grabbed this girl, she's very close to the colors that I'm using on my background and blends in really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my wet paintbrush here just to draw an outline around her which helps to tear her away from the napkin, the rest of the napkin a lot easier than if I wasn't adding the water first. Now you can see also on the bottom of her head, there are some drawings of and outlines of some other girls, which I did not really want on my layout. So I'm gonna cut across here right now. And I think I cut a little bit too high up. I should have left that part in at the bottom. And later on, I will struggle a bit trying to fix it. But right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue cutting along her outline and then add her to my background using some matte gel medium. So I'm using my Nuvo spatula here, my silicone spatula, and I'm adding my matte gel medium behind the napkin and also uh, very thinly on the top of the napkin as well to make sure it's sealed in and it pushes it right into that background. But you can definitely see there is an outline that separates her from the background, which I will be working on next to make sure she blends into the background and look as though she's part of the background. Now I will go ahead, you can see here, I'm pushing outwards, just trying to remove any of the excess matte gel from behind the napkin. I'm pushing very gently, so I'm not ripping the napkin. And here I am gonna go in with some more of the Distress inks that I used before on the colors that blend with my background. So you can see I'm using the yellow close to the yellow on the girl and blending it out into my background. And this is just the first step in blending her into the background. Now you may notice that at the bottom of her face where her hair is at the bottom of the page, it's brown. And that's not any of the colors that I used before. So I'm definitely able to blend in the other colors around her hair and with the green and the yellow and even the orange. But once I get down to that area where her hair is at the bottom of the page, I have some issues. So here I am going in with tea dye and it's darkening up just a little bit, but I'm still seeing that sharp edge that I definitely cut a little bit too high before. So I'm going in now with some vintage photo and that still does not do the trick. So I'm gonna add it in here and then I'm gonna also use the vintage photo and go ahead and ink the edges of this layout very, very lightly. My intentions with this layout was to have it bright and airy and beautiful bright colors and not at all dark. And I decided the vintage photo would definitely be the perfect choice for the outline for this page.
So now I'm working again on blending her into my background by adding in some of her hair extending to the edge of the page. And here I'm just using my black Stabilo All pencil. I am also using that pencil and the shadows that's already on the napkin as a guide to go ahead and draw in some of those shadows. And then I'll activate my pencil using a wet paintbrush. And that certainly helps in, in blending her into that background. So here I'm using some charcoal ink from Close to My Heart with my coarse sponge dauber and just daubing that gray, really dark gray ink onto the girl at the bottom of the page just to try to darken up the ends of her hair just a tiny bit. I am also going in with walnut stain and I'm still not liking how it looks. So I went back to the scraps that I had from my napkin and I grabbed part of her hairline and I'm going to go ahead and add that in to the bottom of her head there using some matte gel medium. And you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out the part that I'm going to use and adhere that in and that definitely worked a lot better. I will go over it with the vintage photo just to blend in this new piece of napkin I'm adding here together with the rest of her of her face that's already on the page. So at this point, I'm really loving how this is coming together, but I felt like my florals was a little bit lost on the background at this point. So I'm gonna go in and just highlight some of these florals on different areas on the background. And you will notice here that I am also adding stenciling on the girl and the background and that just ties her in a lot more to that background.
So next up, I want to go ahead and add the quote to my page and I'm going to use my fine tip gray pen to add my quote, but I did not want it to be the only thing on my page that's gray. So I'm using my Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink right now with this stencil. And you can see I'm just using one design. I'm just turning it in different directions and layering it up and adding that to my background. I'm also not filling it in completely. I am just daubing over it and just leaving some faint outlines of the stencil. So now it's time to add my quote to my page and to help me handwrite my quote, I am using my T-square ruler and a pencil and I'm adding some lines on my background. Now I'm lightly adding these lines, I'm not pressing too hard. And I am using these lines to help me write, handwrite my quote straight and also have an even spacing in between my words. So now I went ahead, used my pencil to write out my quote. That way, if I made any mistakes, I can easily remove it with the eraser. And once I had that down, I'm going over that outline of the quote now with my gray pen. It's a fine tip pen. And then I'll go ahead and erase all of the outlines I made before with my pencil. And next up, I will go over my quote once again with my pen just to darken up those letters. And my quote says, take time to do what makes your soul happy. So now I felt like I had some empty spaces on my background. So I'm going to use that stencil once again and my Hickory Smoke Oxide ink here and just add a little bit more stenciling and filling up those spaces. Now here, once I'm adding in my stenciling, you will notice once again, I am stenciling over both the image and my background at the same time. And like I said before, that just helps tie in the napkin with my background, which is definitely one of my goals when adding the napkin. You, I did not want it to look like it was a separate image from my background. I wanted it to be part of my background. And I really love how this turned out. Once you see the close-up shots, you will see that this girl looks as though she's printed on the background. And I love how it turned out. So here I'm just adding in the same quote on several areas on my layout because I wanted a little bit more script on the background, but I did not want to use a script stencil or stamp. I'm using the same gray fine tip pen to add that in, but I'm not darkening it up like I did the quote that's on the center of the page. I'm just going to go over it just that one time. I'm also adding in dots around those quotes and on different areas on my page here, just adding in a little bit of detail using those dots and using once again that gray pen. And I really love how this layout turned out. I hope you guys enjoy the process and see, even though I did have a few bumps along the way, I just worked at it until I figured it out. And I love how this girl looks on my background. She definitely does not look as though she's separate from my background. She looks like part of it. 
So I hope you guys enjoy the process. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up before you leave. And I do hope you consider subscribing as well. If you're not already following me on Instagram, I will have these still shots there. You can view them there and I will leave my Instagram information in the description box. I want to thank you all for watching today and until next time, bye.